This is a fantastic 72 scale that I think any serious aircraft modeler would enjoy. All right, hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Hearns TV. Uh, my name is Dan and this is my first video that I'll be doing today. So what is it I do here? Now at Hearns, um, I'm into the scale model area of things, in particular the military stuff. Um, aircraft and uh, armored vehicles uh, are definitely my thing. So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, one of my favorite aircraft, uh, one of the scale models. Uh, and in, with one of my favorite model makers as well, Hasegawa has been um, one of the companies I keep going back to over the years because I just really enjoy their kits, um, the details and uh, everything about them. And the plane that I am doing today is the FA-18F Super Hornet. Um, one thing I do like about Hasegawa uh, with their kits is that they put so much detail into the pictures on the front. And I know it's, it's all about the, the contents of the box, what's on the inside and, um, and putting it all together, but presentation really does go a long way. And they've really, had, I think they've outdone themselves this time. You get to see uh, the whole beauty of the plane. You get to see the leading edge extensions and wings, the canted tails. But uh, the reason I chose this one, because um, there are quite a lot of Super Hornet uh, kits on the market, was the, uh, the unit, the squadron markings. Uh, this is from VFA-103, meaning uh, V, meaning fixed wing aircraft fighter and attack squadron number 103, the Jolly Rogers. Now, what some people don't know is that the, the Jolly Rogers actually start off on another squadron, uh, VF-84. Uh, from 1955 till 1995, that squadron was active. Uh, started off with, I think, the FJ-1 Fury, and then it went to the F-4 Phantom and ended up on the now legendary F-14 Tomcat. But uh, after they were disbanded in 1995, the uh, Jolly Roger was given to another squadron. So let's take a look at the inside, shall we? and the instructions on putting it all together. A little bit of history on the uh, Super Hornet. It was first flew in 1995, was designed by a company called McDonnell Douglas. Um, then in 1997, McDonnell Douglas actually merged with Boeing aircraft. And uh, that's when the Super Hornet went into full-scale production. The uh, US Navy and the US Marines are the uh, primary operators of the Super Hornet, although the Royal Australian Air Force and the Kuwaiti Air Force both operate the Super Hornet. Uh, don't think anybody else does, but I could be wrong. And here we have the decal, the markings for the, uh, the Jolly Rogers. And like you can picture it now, can't you? Where it's got the, uh, the two-tone grays, the air superiority grays of the aircraft with, uh, with all of that on it. The, the black and the yellow and the, the white of the skull and crossbones really standing out in that aspect. And there's a piece of, there's the canopy for the uh, pilot and rear seat operator. Now the top of the fuselage, the one like the one thing I like about the Super Hornet is here, the leading edge extensions, um, what helps keep it stable at low speeds and uh, helps it pitch its nose up high angles of attack to get around and get in a shot on an opponent before the opponent can uh, turn into them. And here we have the flare dispensers at the very rear, or oh, a flare and chaff actually dispensers at the very rear of of the fuselage. And here on the air intakes, they've been angled down and back to the side. That actually helps to reduce this radar cross section. So it doesn't, it makes it much harder to show up on, uh, on enemies, on the enemy's radar. And another thing you'll notice as well, on the underside, where there are the doors for the landing gear, you can see how it's cut like that in slightly little jagged patterns like that. 
Um, one thing about st uh, stealth or, or reducing the radar cross-section of an aircraft is to not have any flat panels or flat surfaces facing directly forward. That actually helps to bounce back um, the radar signal and they can see you coming. If there's one thing you'll notice on stealth aircraft and a lot of new uh, new generation of fighter planes, a lot of the air intakes and everything usually have an angle to them for exactly those reasons. We have the landing gear there. I'll take this one back. And there we have the wings of the aircraft. And there we have the uh, head up display just inside the cockpit. Uh, apparently, the Super Hornets. Um, cockpit is uh, a lot uh, simplified from the Legacy Hornet. There's uh, less uh, dials and less displays and it's easier for the pilot to operate that. Personally, I've never been inside the cockpit so I've just got to take the word on, um, on the people who have told me that. And let's have a look at some of the other details. We have the tail planes. And now, the ordnance. The underwing pylons for the disposal stores. We have them here and here. And this one comes equipped with both AIM-9 Sidewinders, a short range heat seeking, and what looks to be mid to late generation AIM-120 AMRAAM, medium range missiles. And along with, along with the weapons, we also have the additional fuel tanks. And the remainder of the landing gear right there. A fairly simple loadout on this one. Uh, so it's obviously for a high speed short range interception with uh, two AMRAMs and two sidewinders. Uh, very versatile aircraft too, the, uh, the Super Hornet, not just air to air, but anti-ship and uh, an air to ground for attack, attack duties. Yeah, so very straightforward. Beautiful model though, beautiful model. Um, I can imagine this going together so well, just like all the other Hasegawa kits that I've done um, over the years. So I'll just chuck some of this stuff back and then we'll have a look at the instructions and the manual that comes along with it. Now, one thing also with, obviously with stealth, is camouflage. But as you can see, with, um, with this model. This is paint, this is the 75th anniversary edition. So normally the Super Hornet would have two-tone gray or the neutral grays of uh, most uh, frontline fighters uh, in, uh, in modern service. This one in particular though, has the, the de not only the decal, but around, around the cockpit, the painted in black like the legacy uh, paint jobs of uh, naval aircraft. If you've ever seen movies like uh, The Final Countdown, and um, I think even in Top Gun, it's been a while since I've seen that, but um, the color scheme for the US Navy, the underside, as you can see here, the underside of the aircraft was much lighter, sometimes even white. And then the upper parts here, were a dark gull grey and then they would have black around the nose and they would have a matte black around the canopy. I was actually told that they used to have black around the can a matte black around the canopy because it was less likely to reflect sunlight onto uh, into the pilot's eyes and it was more about uh, uh, the visuals for the operators than actual camouflage. But yeah, anyway. I think that concludes that. As you can see, this 
is a fantastic 72 scale that I think any serious aircraft modeler would seriously enjoy doing. So yeah, excellent. Thanks very much for tuning in to Hearns TV, guys. Hearns TV, guys. Uh, my name is Dan. Like I said, this is my first one. So hopefully you get to see me a lot more on this YouTube channel. So tune in again. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in store soon. Rock and roll.